This is part two of our lesson on tropical cyclones, or again, hurricanes as we commonly call them. And we're starting with naming hurricanes. And there are a couple characteristics. First of all, if you look at the name list, um, I have 2013, 2014, all the way up to 2018. Take a look at the names of these storms. Okay, the first storm of the season, for example, 2017, Arlene, second one, Brett, third one, Cindy. Okay, what are some patterns that you notice with the names? First thing you probably notice is they're alphabetical. Okay, start with A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, R, S, T, V, W. Missing a couple letters because there's not that many um, names that use those letters. Other things you might, might notice, they alternate genders. Okay, so boy name, girl name, boy name, girl name, boy name, girl name. Okay, then they flip the next year. Girl name, boy name, girl name, boy name. Okay, so they alternate genders. They're also usually fairly short, distinctive names. Okay, it's easy to report on them in the news. It's a lot easier to use names instead of just the latitude and longitude. So it kind of captivates interest. You talk about Hurricane Andrew or Gilbert or Fran or something like that, and it kind of captivates interest, and it's easy, to, easy for the American public to um, stay with it. Also, you see that there are quite a few international names. They're not all of what you would just typically call Americanized names. And the reason for that is because hurricanes hit other countries instead of the United States. Um, some might hit Cuba or Jamaica or Mexico. So those country get, countries get, um, get recognized also. Um, every six years, you see these are six-year cycles. So every six years, um, a group gets together to look at the hurricane name list. And sometimes names are replaced. Um, they, they also get the international names on there, and countries can replace their names. Um, the United States gets the majority of the hurricanes, so we kind of get to pick the majority of the names for the years. Um, as I said, it's kind of a six-year name list. And you'll notice that um, a lot of these are repeated. Okay? So if we look at, for example, um, let's take 2018. Okay? Alberto. Go back six years, go back six years again, and we get to 2006. Okay, so Alberto, Alberto, Beryl, Beryl, Chris, Chris, Debbie, Debbie, Ernesto, Ernesto, Florence, Florence, Gord. Okay, so they're using the same names over and over again. Sometimes you might notice that there are some different ones. And let me look and see if I can find one um, really quickly here. Um, it looks like Irene is an example of one. Okay, so if I highlight this, we see Irene in 2005, but we don't see it in 2017. Okay, they replaced it. Irene was a really, really bad storm, so they retired the name, which we're going to talk about. Also in 2005 is one that you've heard of, hopefully, Hurricane Katrina. Okay, it destroyed New Orleans. You notice that one has been replaced with Katia for 2017. Okay, so these really big storms, they're going to retire. And, of course, then um, new, new names have to get picked. Um, and you see some older ones here, too, as you can again, kind of look. And we're in, the, we're in the Arlene track there and the Arlene track here. Um, you can look at the Arlene track here um, from 1999 and really see the difference. Um, Floyd was a really bad storm. And you see that Floyd there was replaced um, for 2005 with Franklin. Okay? And Franklin wasn't a really bad storm, so they kept it for 2017. Okay, So I think you probably get the name, um, the idea with names there. Um, these are some ones for other oceans, so ones that you know probably aren't going to affect Texas. Um, some Pacific Ocean names, the ones might get Hawaii. Um, also, I put down Central North Pacific names. And then there's the links to other, other name lists, too, because other countries, you know, typhoons and cyclones are going to have different name lists as well. Here is a list of the retired names, and there's probably some more that I haven't added to it yet, um, kind of running out of room. And again, they retire a hurricane when it's a really significant hurricane. 
that when we talk about Hurricane Katrina, we want to make sure everybody knows that we're talking about that one in 2005 that destroyed New Orleans. Or when we're talking about Hurricane Andrew, that was that you know strongest winds ever recorded for a hurricane. We want to know that we're talking about that one that destroyed lots of Florida. So they do retire um, hurricanes if they were significant hurricanes. Hurricane rotation, we can go through this pretty quickly. We already talked about the Coriolis effect. Okay. That in the right, or in the northern hemisphere, winds are turned to the right. In the southern hemisphere, winds are turned to the left. Because of that, the hurricane rotation, or tropical cyclone rotation, in the northern hemisphere is counterclockwise. So you look at this one, that's in the northern hemisphere because it's going counterclockwise. You see one like this is going clockwise. That means it's in the southern hemisphere. Hurricane Opal here you see is counterclockwise, northern hemisphere. Okay. And if you don't quite understand the difference of why it switches counterclockwise to clockwise, if you have a globe, um, spin it. Okay, so pick up your globe, spin it, you know, for northern hemisphere, spin it counterclockwise. Okay, and look at the globe from the northern hemisphere, north, north pole, and it's going counterclockwise. Then while it's still spinning, turn it over and look at it from the south pole. You'll see that now, well, it's not spinning counterclockwise anymore. Now it's going clockwise. Okay, and that's why the hurricane rotation is different. Now, if you think it's the same way for sinks or toilets when you go down to Australia, that usually isn't the case. For the Coriolis effect to take effect, it needs to be a large, large, large body of air or um, you know, fluid, so water, air, um, over a long time. Uh, a toilet flushing or just a sink draining, it doesn't have enough time for the Coriolis effect to turn the earth enough to give it a spin. Um, so that's why if you go to Australia, the sinks might go down counterclockwise, it might go clockwise. It, you know, it really doesn't matter. It's a lot of times how the toilet makers um, make them, or sink makers make them, so that they will spin some way and, and carry everything down. Okay. Here's a pretty picture of Hurricane Ike. And again, you can see the nice counterclockwise rotation, a very nice um, circular storm. Not a very distinct eye in this picture. Okay, it could have been a lot worse than it was in 2008. Right side damage, we talked about this already when we talked about resultant velocity. So hopefully you remember that, um, that example when we did our physics. What we're talking about with right side damage is what is the strongest part of a tropical cyclone? The strongest part is the right side. The reason for it is that hurricanes are spinning in the northern hemisphere counterclockwise. Okay, like that, counterclockwise. If a hurricane is also, or a hurricane is also moving in a certain direction, okay, to the left in this case. So if I have, let's say it's a hundred mile per hour hurricane. Get a little pen. So if it's spinning at 100 miles per hour and moving forward at 20 miles per hour, okay, the right side, so according to the hurricane, the hurricane's right side is going to be 120 mile per hour winds. The 100 from the spin plus the 20 from the track. So the right side is a lot stronger winds. The left side is only going to be 80. You're going to subtract that. So the right side is far more damaging. Um, this is Hurricane Rita. Hurricane Rita hit Texas, okay, down, kind of down by Beaumont, Texas in 2005. Um, this really shows the strength, okay, the right side of the hurricane. So the center of the hurricane, the eye is right in here, okay. The right side of the hurricane was much, 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 much stronger. It's a fast rotation and a fast track. You see these, these arrows are wind also. You see, again, this counterclockwise turning. This shows the same thing, that you might see this on a weather forecast, or they might give you these warnings. So a lot of people stay in hurricane areas until they watch the news, and the news shows where the track is, and they will, they will say, you know, these places are expected to be on the left side, these places are expected to be on the right side. If you're on the left side, evac, or if you, stay, you can stay there, maybe. On the right side, you definitely want to evacuate. Okay. Also, not only are the winds the strongest on the right side. That's where little tornadoes are often spawned. And it's where the strongest storm surge is. Okay. 
And storm surge is the most deadly part of a hurricane. About 90% of all the deaths in hurricanes are caused by storm surge, not by wind. Storm surge is pretty simple. It's just a big mound of water that's pushed up by the hurricane winds. And that mound of water is then dragged ashore and destroys everything. So think about the hurricane in the middle of the ocean. So the winds are coming together. Remember, the winds are spiraling in, spiraling in. Okay. That pushes the water in to the middle. And it creates a mound of water. Okay. The low pressure doesn't make too much of a difference. It's really the winds pushing the water in together. When the ocean's really deep, a lot of that water can kind of go down and out like that. But when we get near shore and the ocean floor is very shallow, it can't flow out, so we get a big mound of water that's then dragged above. You see in this picture here, this wind-driven surge, a big mound of water that gets dragged ashore and um, floods everything. Um, here's some pictures, so a storm surge coming in. This picture shows that what time of day the hurricane hits is really important. If a hurricane hits at low tide, well, maybe the storm surge will only take it up to a high tide level. But if a hurricane hits at high tide, the storm surge may push it way, way, way up. Okay, so the time of day that a hurricane hits is very important because the ocean might be higher or lower depending on the tide. Um, this is Galveston after Ike, so Texas, you know, Galveston Island in Texas. Um, just some pic pictures, and I'll just run, you know, just kind of go through really quickly. You see, um, this was Murdoch's. It was the uh, kind of souvenir stand, and it was on on piers. It's, it it was destroyed. They they actually have it now rebuilt. Um, Against more piers and cars left. This was the flagship hotel that was kind of destroyed. This was the road going to the flagship hotel, and that was knocked out about a 20 foot span. So you couldn't get there. Um, a lot of cars and stuff you can see were trapped on this hotel for years. Hotel rooms ripped open. You can see the inside of the hotel rooms. Uh, this is Ms. Howe. And here is the, is the water line for Ike. So this is how high the storm surge got. It basically flooded Galveston to that level. And they, they have it drawn on the building so you can see where the water level was. And everything below that was flooded. Uh, storm surge is by far the worst part. Um, more pictures. And for Galveston, this is the bridge. Uh, one of the bridges is getting close, and then the, and you'll get on a bridge to go over to Galveston. And you can just see this destruction. Um, some houses left, the newer houses were left. A lot of everything else was just destroyed and piled up on the roads and other places. Hurricane watch and warning. Hurricane watch means that a hurricane may hit within 24 to 48 hours. A hurricane warning is that the hurricane is expected to hit in less than 24 hours. And usually they figure out, you know, they help do with the watches and warnings. They fly an airplane through, in which you see a video, where they fly an airplane through to get the exact measurements of the hurricane, and then they can make a best guess track as to where they think the hurricane is going to go. Um, the Cypher Simpson scale talks about hurricane intensity. Category 5 is the strongest. Okay, winds 156 miles per hour and up. Storm surge, you know, 20 to 24 feet goes down to a category one, and then below that, of course, is a tropical storm, and below that would be the tropical depression. And you see in these, in these high category storms, you would have debris, like in this picture here, the two by four through the palm tree. Hurricane safety, we're gonna talk about this mostly in class, but things like evacuation, obviously, storm shutters to protect your windows because you don't want the wind to get into your house, it will destroy it. You can evacuate to a tall, strong building if you can't evacuate out of the area. Hurricane winds are usually not strong enough to knock down well-built buildings, so you can evacuate up, and that's what a lot of people do. The main, and things like with your house, hurricane brackets to hold the roof on, um, big things, but the big way to um, protect it is to rebuild marshes. We'll talk about the seawall in Galveston and what they did there, so we'll talk about that in class, and then rebuilding the beaches to help absorb the wind, building on piers, but again, the big thing is to restore the wetlands. You need to get wetlands there so it'll absorb the wind and the water before it would get to your city like New Orleans. All this wetlands is gone. You can even see pictures here 
of a before and after Katrina, um, a before and after and all this wetlands is gone. And now New Orleans is really vulnerable because of that.